Hello. So in this lecture, we are going to continue our discussion of transforms, and in particular, we are going to introduce the Z transform, and we are going to connect the Z transform with the discrete time Fourier transform that you learnt in the previous video. Okay. So before we continue, so I just want to introduce the concept of series. Okay, some series and convergence. For example, if you consider the following series as an example, okay, let's say we have one plus x plus x square plus x cube and so on, ad infinitum, okay, then under some conditions you can sum this series. In fact, you can show that the sum is going to be one by one minus x under some conditions. This is not unconditional. For example, if x is 1, you get 1 plus 1 plus 1 and you go to infinity. If x is a number which is greater than 1 or you know even less than minus 1, this will basically be a diverging series. But for mod x less than 1, this is definitely true. So if you know that mod x is less than 1, then this series converges. So now why do I why am I interested in this and what is the connection with discrete time signals? It turns out that if you remember the DTFT, we said that certain sequences do not have a DTFT. For example, if you look at 2 power n un, you cannot define a DTFT for it because this sequence is uh, not absolutely symbol and you can also not shoehorn your way into making a DTFT for it because it doesn't really, you know, if you basically evaluate summation 2 power n e power minus j omega, it doesn't result in something which converges for every value of omega. So now given that this is the case, why we now, we can now look at a more general way. So if I define the Z transform in this manner, summation, It's x n z power minus n where z is a complex number. Okay. This is called the z transform. There is a slight catch. We need to also define some other restrictions on z. But for now, let us go with this. Okay. So with this definition, what happens to 2 power n u n? So let's have a look. We will sum in going from minus infinity to infinity 2 power n u n z to the minus n. Now notice that this is there is a u n so I might as well eliminate u n by and sum this from 0 to infinity is the same thing 2 power n z power minus n. Now for this sequence to converge okay in fact let us actually write it in a more compact manner is actually 2 upon z whole power n and this is 1 plus 2 upon z plus 2 upon z the whole square and so on ad infinitum. Now if you remember the example we did on the top this sequence will converge to 1 by 1 plus 2 upon z, sorry, 1 by 1 minus 2 upon z, I'm sorry. Under a condition, and that condition is that magnitude of 2 upon z must be less than 1. So, this is the condition that is required to be imposed for you to have the z transform of the sequence to be defined in this manner. So, in other words, we have to always add for mod z greater than 2. So, the z transform allows you to define a compact notation, like you know, the compact representation in terms of you know this uh, expression 1 by 1 minus 2 z inverse. It is a transform of the signal, and you have to specify the region of convergence. Okay, this is called the region of convergence ROC. 
primarily because uh, it's the uh, on the complex plane it defines those complex num values of z for which this sequence uh, this series converges okay so this is actually one way to define uh, the z transform instead of in the dtft you have summation xn e power minus j omega n in the case of the z transform you have summation xn z power minus n and since z is not constrained to be magnitude 1 you can define what values of z allow you to sum this to a reasonable value okay let's now uh, just let's now just see uh, some more examples and see what happens okay okay so let's see this is some uh, you know mod z greater than 2 is the condition for this uh, to have a uh, this sequence to have a valid z transform great okay let us also look at some other, so let's, say, let's make it more general. Let's look at a power n un. If you look at a power n un, it turns out that the z transform will be 1 by 1 minus a z inverse for mod z greater than mod a. Assuming a is a complex number, this is exactly the same as the previous one which you saw. This is uh, basically, uh, you know, this is something which is, uh, which can clearly be seen from above, okay. Let us now take another sequence, okay. So, let us now consider another sequence. The sequence being minus a power n un u of minus n minus 1. What is the difference between a power n un and minus a power n u of minus n minus 1? So, a power n un, let us say that mod a is less than 1, can be thought of as a sequence which keeps decreasing for positive n and this minus a power n u of minus n minus 1 is basically the sequence which is increasing, of course, with a negative sign, but let us, you know, let us just see what happens, okay. This negative sign is, uh, uh, has been put there for a reason. We will find that out when we find the z transform, okay. So, this is the left sided exponential sequence. Let us try to find out the z transform of this. Now, if you look carefully, u of minus n minus 1 is the left, uh, is like the flipped version of the unit step and in fact it is 1 for minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. How do I see that? If you substitute the value of n to be 0, you get u of minus 1 which is 0, 1, your u of minus 2 which is 0 and so on. The only values for which this is non-zero are minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. So, I am going to just go ahead and substitute minus a. So, I am going to put n as minus 1, minus a inverse, z inverse, whole inverse is z, minus a power minus 2, z square, minus a power minus 3, z cube and so on. Why do I get z and all? If you look at the formula, it is summation xn z power minus n. If you put n as minus 1, you get plus 1 for the z. If you put n as minus 2, you get plus 2 for the z and so on. So, now if you go ahead and complete this summation, this is minus a inverse z times 1 plus z by a plus z square by a square and so on. Now, this sequence again by looking at the way we summed the sequence 1 plus x plus x square above can be summed as minus a inverse z upon 1 minus z upon a. So, I am going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by a z inverse. So, I am going to just multiply by a minus a z inverse minus a z inverse and this is equal to, so notice that the numerator becomes 1 and the denominator sign changes, so it is going to be, oh it is 1 by 1 minus a z inverse and the condition I used to sum this was mod z upon mod a is less than 1, so I get mod z less than mod a. Now, here is something interesting. If you compare the sequence a power n un whose z transform was 1 by 1 minus a z inverse 
and if you look at the sequence minus a power n u of minus and minus 1, it has a z transform 1 by 1 minus a z inverse which is the same expression except that the region of convergence is different. So, for this we have mod z greater than mod a and mod z less than mod a. So, now notice that the z transform is actually in some sense more general and sometimes more powerful than the GTFT because you are able to handle different types of sequences. Some sequences that have uh, you know are left sided, right sided, growing exponentially, decaying exponentially, all those things can be handled and the fact that they have the same expression for z transform emphasizes that the z transform is incomplete and unspecified unless you specify the ROC. So, the region of convergence specifies the exact sequence, okay. I will give you a, you know, this, this comes back uh, to our, uh, you know, this comes back over here as well, right. So for example, if you have this kind of sequence, unless you are guaranteed that mod x is less than 1, this expansion 1 by 1 minus x cannot be performed in this way. So, this is a predefined condition. If you want uh, to learn more about this, you can go back and look at the binomial theorem and things like that or power series, this condition is required. The same condition comes back over here, okay. Now, one question you may ask is, why are we interested in the Z transform? Why are we interested in sequences like this, you know, a, uh, you know, minus a power u of minus n minus 1? It turns out that we are not always, you know, I mean, we do not always constrain ourselves to consider just causal sequences or, you know, uh, you know, we are even for that matter stable sequences because 2 power n un, for example, is as a, when viewed as a uh, Nisky tank system, is unstable. However, if you use 2 power n un and convolve it with some a sequence which is finite, then you may or may not be affected by the fact. For example, if you convolve 2 power n un with delta n plus delta n minus 1, you are going to get 2 power n un plus 2 power n minus n u of minus n minus 1. And then maybe you are going to window it or multiply it and things like that. So, there may be practical applications where you are interested in sequences which are, which maybe seem to blow up also. So, given that that is the case, we are interested in a more general kind of representation, okay. Still, one question that is not clear is, why are we still considering this? What is the, you know, secret source of this Z transform? To give you the reason why the z transform is interesting, I will take a simple example. Let us take the sequence delta n plus half delta n minus 1 and I want to convolve it with delta n minus 1 plus uh, so let us say minus half delta n minus 3, okay. So, maybe I will uh, do it pictorially, okay, delta n, this is half delta n minus 1, this is 1, half, 0, 1, this is our first sequence and then we have to, the second sequence is at 0, and this is at 1 and this is at 2, uh, sorry, let us say uh, at 0 it is 0 and this is at 3, okay. So, at 3 it is minus half, okay. Now, the easiest way to perform this convolution pictorially is to basically place this at this location and place negative half of that at this location. So, if you are adept at this, you can do it pictorially. So, I am just going to place this at this location. So, I am just going to shift this by 1. This delta n minus 1 will delay it by 1. So, I am just going to, so at 0 it is 0, at 1 it is 1, it is half at 2 and then so I will just 0, 1 and this is 2 and 3. At If I convolve, if I multiply these by minus half, at 3 I am going to get a minus half and at 4 I am going to get a minus 1 by 4. So, that is basically my answer. My answer is delta n minus 1 plus half 
delta n minus 2 minus half delta n minus 3 minus 1 fourth delta n minus 4. Okay, great. Okay. This is one uh, approach to solving this problem. Okay. Let us now look at the multiplication property of the set transforms. Now, you know that in the case of DTFT, when you uh, when you basically multiply to, when you convolve two sequences, their DTFT is multiplied. You remember that. The same property holds for Z-transforms. Okay. We will see how. Let us find the Z-transform of the first sequence. The first sequence has Z-transform. So, delta n has Z-transform. Its summation delta n Z power minus n, only n is 0, 1 half delta n minus 1. Again, if you substitute it in the formula for the set transform evaluation, summation x n z power minus n, half that inverse. Multiplied by, because convolution transfers to multiplication, delta n minus 1 has z inverse and minus half delta n minus 3 will have z power minus 3. Let us now perform the multiplication of these sequences. So, I am going to get, so this z inverse is going to, there is going to be this z inverse plus half z power minus 2 minus half z power minus 3 minus 1 fourth z power minus 4. Okay, what is the sequence corresponding to this? Z inverse gives me delta of n minus 1 plus half z power minus 2 is delta n minus 2 minus half z minus 3 is delta n minus 3 minus 1 fourth delta n minus 4. So, if you look at what is happening over here, k is 2 are equal. And this is not surprising because polynomial multiplication is actually the same as convolution. Okay, like if you want to, for example, if like if you are, if you want to uh, multiply the polynomials x square plus x plus one with x minus one, let's say you are using some uh, Python or MATLAB or Octave, how would you how would you do it? In fact, you would use the con function c o n d. So, polynomial multiplication is the same as discrete sequence convolution. So, the Z transform essentially exploits this property. Now, this example is maybe you may say it is contrived because in a sense the operations happening here and here are the same, but largely you see the Z inverse causes a shift in time, which is why the Z inverse causes this one to be delayed and you get Z inverse. That is exactly what has happens when you get delta n convolved with delta n minus 1. But what if we take some different example? Let us take a more useful example, okay. Let us say that you can take the sequence un. un has z transform, very easy. It will be 1 plus z inverse plus z power minus 2, 1 by 1 minus z inverse and mod z should be okay. You can verify this. Okay. Let's now let's now see what you get when you convolve some other sequence with un. Okay. Let's say let's take uh, I'll take half power n un. Which corresponds to 1 by 1 minus half z inverse. Mod z is greater than half. Okay. So now if you read in the book on the chapter on z transforms, you will find that mod z greater than 1 and mod z greater than half uh, are the ROCs for these sequences respectively. If you convolve, then the ROC becomes the worst of them, meaning it will become the intersection, okay. So, because uh, you, 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 when, you, when you convolve, the uh, ROC is at least the intersection of these is what you will uh, find in general. So, let us actually perform this convolution. So, performing this convolution, you can now either do it in the linear, uh, in, sorry, in the time domain where you will have a double summation and you can all, you know, you will have a summation rather and you can always just uh, evaluate the summation, you will get it. But actually using the z transform is more, uh, you know, it 
much more convenient because then the convolution is going to yield 1 by 1 minus z inverse multiplied by 1 minus half z inverse. Okay. And the ROC is, if you look at the intersection, so at least mod z is greater than 1. Okay. It may be uh, bigger than this, but at least mod z is greater than 1. So let us look, but then this is not something which is uh, very convenient to handle. Okay. So one thing we can do is we can always perform the partial fraction expansion of this, right. So if you know, so you know how to perform partial fractions, you are going to basically write this as A upon 1 minus Z inverse plus B upon 1 minus half Z inverse and then you are going to write this as A 1 minus half z inverse plus b into 1 minus z inverse upon 1 minus z inverse 1 minus half z inverse. So now we can just equate the terms and you will get the equations a plus b is equal to in the numerator a plus b is equal to 1 and you will get minus a upon 2. minus b is equal to 0. So, you basically get b is equal to minus a by 2. So, substituting this over here, you get a is equal to 2, b is equal to minus 1. So, you can verify that the, this is actually, this, uh, this z transform is actually going to boil down to minus z inverse plus, sorry, minus 1 by half z inverse. Again remember mod z greater than 1. So now for mod z greater than 1, if you now find the inverse z transforms. Now how do you find the inverse z transforms? Look at the ROC, find the sequence that satisfies this. Remember in the above example where we did the, uh, you, you know for if, if these kinds of z transforms depending on the ROC, there may be two different sequences which satisfy. Notice that for these, both of them have the outward region of convergence, mod z is greater than 1. So you can actually easily do the inversion. This is going to be 2 u of n minus So, so now this uh, this you have this two u n minus half power n u n, uh, which is the uh, inverse that transform. If you see how you know uh, you look at the ROC, this is what you get. This was a much more straightforward operation than if you had performed the convolution directly. Well, you, you may argue that you can do it manually, but for some more situations uh, where things become more complicated, this becomes more intuitive. So now, given that this is the case, what is the Z-transform actually doing? The Z-transform is actually performing the convolution in the background using the fact that polynomial multiplication is the same as convolution. So whenever you have a sequence, you are trying to convert it to an appropriate polynomial so that if you now want to perform the convolution, instead of performing the convolution, you can multiply the polynomials. Well, you, I'm, I'm uh, using the word 1 by 1 minus z inverse is also a polynomial. Well, it's actually a rational, uh, it's a ratio of polynomials, but still you can perform the multiplication of those. Why is this advantageous? In many situations, for example, in the case of a power n, u n and some more sequences that you will see, the polynomials have, or rather the z transforms have a much more compact representation performing the analysis and performing these uh, you know convolution operations is much much easier in this domain rather than just do the time domain convolution okay so that is something which you have to just keep in mind so now there is one final thing so why did we study dtft then okay well it turns out that the dtft existence has an important connection with frequency and that connection is something which is very useful when we design systems for let's say filtering or processing some voids or things like that. 
So what is the connection between the Z transform and PTFTs? Remember, not all the sequences that have Z transforms have PTFTs. But for DTFT to exist, we need to substitute Z is equal to e power minus j omega. But that means that mod Z is equal to 1 must be within the ROC. Okay. So, this leads to an interesting condition. Okay. So, we need that mod Z is equal to 1 must be within the ROC. So, then let us actually look at this. Uh, let us look at an example. Let us say we take a power n to n. We know that the Z transform is 1 by 1 minus A Z inverse for mod Z greater than mod A. Okay, mod Z is greater than mod A. Okay, if mod Z is greater than mod A, then we know that the DTFT will exist. Mod Z equal to 1 must belong to the ROC. Which means that if my mod Z is greater than mod A includes the unit circle that is mod Z equal to 1, I have a DTFT for the sequence which basically means that the mod A has to be less than 1. Why? If you look pictorially, sorry, okay, let us make a, let us just draw a coordinate axis, now let us let's just draw a line draw the line, let's draw a circle, okay, so now I think we can uh, move this circle to make it center, okay, so now, so basically this is, okay, maybe I will call this, uh, you know, let's say this let us say that this distance is mod A. Okay. This is a circle with radius mod A. So, this ROC is mod Z, mod Z greater than mod A is this ROC. Now, if the unit circle, okay, if the unit circle is going to be within this ROC, then we can define a DTFT. But if, if the unit circle is not included, then we can't, which means that mod A is less than 1 will guarantee that the DTFT exists and in fact, the DTFT is going to be 1 by 1 minus A e power minus J omega, that is the DTFT. If mod Z is greater than mod A, then the DTFT will not exist. But this, if you see, has a connection with what you have already learned. Mod Z equal to 1 belonging to the ROC means that if you substitute Z is equal to 1, Z is equal to any such value, the sequence is summable. So, in fact, there is a connection between this mod Z equal to 1 DTFT existence and FIBO stability. So, if mod Z equal to 1 is part of the ROC, then the DTFT exists and the sequence is absolutely summable. Okay. So, this automatically means that for, uh, you know, let us, if you take the example of 0.9 power n un, okay, 0.9 power n un, 1 by 1 minus 0 0.9, z inverse, mod z greater than 0 0.9, mod z greater than 0 0.9, definitely has mod z greater than 1 within the ROC, so DTFT is 1 by 1 minus 0 0.9 e power minus j omega. Basically, you just substitute z is equal to e power j omega. Next, minus 0 0.9 power n u of minus n minus 1. So, for this sequence, the DTFT is again 1 by 1 minus 0 0.9 z inverse but the ROC is mod Z less than 0 0.9, DTFT does not exist. Now, finally, we come to a controversial uh, one. Okay? The controversial one is UN. The Z transform is 
वन बाई वन माइनस जेड इनवर्स एंड मॉड जेड ग्रेटर देन वन तो मॉड जेड इज ग्रेटर देन वन नोटिस दैट मॉड जेड स्ट्रिक्टली ग्रेटर देन वन implies that the unit circle does not belong to the roc the unit circle is like just at the boundary but it does not belong to the roc so according to this logic the gtft does not exist in the strict sense okay in the strict sense meaning you cannot define the gtft in a clean way uh, as an absolutely convergent way without these impulses if you remember the dtft of un had those pi delta of omega inside so it was 1 by 1 minus e par minus j omega plus pi summation delta omega minus 2 pi k so since there are deltas the dtft we said does not exist by the same logic you know if you look at the sequence cos omega not n double sided infinity this sequence does not even have a z transform and therefore does not have a dtft same thing it, but again we can use impulses to define a dtft so what is the connection between the dtft and the z transform both of these perform this uh, some similar uh, operations when you talk about convolution but the dtft exists only when the sequence is absolutely summable or if you allow deltas in which case the z transform may or may not exist and it may not have sync but an absolutely convergent you know like let's say nice dtft will exist only if and only if the z transform has mod z equal to 1 that is a unit circle within the roc if the unit circle does not belong to the roc then the dtft will not exist okay that's the uh, connection between the dtft and the z transform so in the next video we'll discuss a little more about the properties of the z transform and some examples thank you